this video, we'll study the sum and difference formulas for trig functions. You want to know what the sine of 15 degrees is? We'll discover this value and many more. Precalculus Online starts now. In section 7.5, we look at the sum and difference formulas for trigonometric functions. So the first thing we want to do is develop one of these functions. And I've already drawn the basic pictures for us here. Let's go ahead and describe some of these uh, things that are going on. And it's important for you to see where these come from. It will not be tested on this, but as always, we want you to know uh, the origin of some of these things. What I have are, are two different angles. And for this exercise, we're going to assume that the angles are in this order. We're going to assume that beta and alpha are positive in the first rotation and that beta is smaller than alpha. And that's exactly what the picture uh, is drawn as, uh, as you see it right there. Now, what I want to do is, is uh, tell you we have a unit circle here. So the radius of this is 1. And this first point here on the terminal side on the circle of the angle beta we're going to call that P1, and we know the coordinates of this because we're on a unit circle. The x-coordinate is the cosine of the angle, so it's cosine of beta, and the y-coordinate is the sine of the angle, so it's sine of beta. Next, let's take a look at the point over here in the second quadrant. And again, this is in general. It doesn't have to be a second quadrant. That could be very small, but this is just... Uh, just a little arbitrary proof. Let's call that point P2. And again, this point that we're looking at is on the terminal side on the unit circle for the standard position angle alpha. So the x-coordinate for that is the cosine of alpha. And the y-coordinate for that point is the sine of alpha. Now, what we're looking at in this proof is the difference formula. And the difference that we want to look at is right here. It's the difference between these two angles, alpha and beta. We call that alpha minus beta. And we've assumed that alpha is bigger, so alpha minus beta certainly makes sense. Now what I want to do now is to take this triangle. Let me highlight this triangle in this blue color. And I'm going to rotate the triangle down until this edge, that is the terminal side of the beta angle, is now on the x-axis. And when I do that, that produces the picture on the right. So again, this angle now, since the triangle has been rotated, is angle alpha minus beta. We now have some new points to deal with. We have point A, which is the terminal side of the standard position angle for 0, which is automatically 1, 0. You could think of it in terms of cosine and sine, but the cosine of 0 is 1, and the sine of 0 is 0. But it is the point on the x-axis at angle 0, so it's 1, 0. Let's have a third point here named point, so P3. This again is the point on the unit circle on the terminal side of an angle, but the angle is now alpha minus beta. So the x-coordinate for that point is the cosine of alpha minus beta, and the y-coordinate is the sine of the angle alpha minus beta. We treat alpha minus beta as a single entity. Now, thinking about these two triangles, let me go ahead and highlight this one in the uh, light blue color as well. What is the relationship between these two triangles? It turns out that the triangle on the left, triangle O, P1, P2, is congruent to the triangle on the right, triangle O, A, P3. And the reason for that from Geometry, hopefully you remember this, is side angle side. They both have 
the same sides, uh, these two sides here, uh, because of the radii on the unit circle. And they clearly have the same angle, alpha minus beta. A rotation that we performed from the left one to the right one did not change the angle, so the angles are the same. So we have side angle side, and thus we have congruent triangles. Well, since we have congruent triangles, that means we must have uh, corresponding parts are the same. The parts that we want to equate in this one are this uh, third side. I'll go ahead and mark that with the two marks in purple. And what are those sides? Well, I'm going to use the D notation for distance. On the left one here, it's the distance between P1 and P2 must be the same as the distance on that side on the second triangle, which is the distance from A to P3. All right. Now, if we look at those circles and we uh, start doing the equations, I'm actually going to do this, uh, this right one here first. I'm going to do that one on the left side, and I'll move the other one to the right side as well. But the distance formula, you'll recall, is, let me just put that up here in purple, the distance between two points A and B is the square root of the change in the x's squared plus the change in the y's squared. It's basically the Pythagorean theorem, so no worries there. So what is the distance from A to P3? Let me start with P3. The x-coordinate for P3 is the cosine of alpha minus beta minus the x-coordinate from A, which is 1, plus, and this is still under the square root, the y-coordinate from P3, which is sine of alpha minus beta, minus the y-coordinate from a, which is 0 squared, and all that is under the square root, that is going to be equal to the distance from p1 to p2. So the x-coordinate for p2 is the cosine of alpha. The x-coordinate for P1 is the cosine of beta, and then you square that, plus, now take the difference in the y-coordinates from these two points. That's going to be sine of alpha minus sine of beta squared. And that's the equation for the distance that must be the same. Now all we have to do is, is work some of this stuff out. So the first thing I'm going to recognize is that if I have the square root of something is equal to the square root of something else, then the two things under the square roots must be the same. So I'm going to rewrite everything now without the square roots. So it's going to be the cosine of alpha minus beta minus 1 squared plus the 0 here, can uh, eh, we can just get rid of that. So this is going to be sine squared of alpha minus beta is equal to the cosine of alpha minus the cosine of beta squared plus the sine of alpha minus the sine of beta squared. Next, I need to work out all these squares. So on the left side, we get cosine squared of alpha minus beta minus 2 cosine of alpha minus beta plus 1 plus sine squared of alpha minus beta. All this is equal to the right side worked out. The right side works out as cosine squared alpha minus 2 cosine alpha cosine beta plus cosine squared beta and then work out the sines that are squared over there. That would be sine squared alpha 
minus 2 sine alpha times sine beta plus sine squared of beta. Then let's see what we have. Well, on the left side, we have sine, oh, sorry, cosine squared of alpha minus beta and sine squared of alpha minus beta. So together, it's cosine squared of an angle plus sine squared of an angle. The angle is alpha minus beta, but as long as they're the same, that's equal to 1. So that one transferred into a 1, minus 2 cosine of alpha minus beta, plus 1. Let's see what we have on the right side. We have cosine squared of alpha and sine squared of alpha. So that's going to make another 1. And we have cosine squared of beta plus sine squared of beta. And that's going to be another 1. Lots of 1's all over the place here. And the rest is the same. Minus 2 cosine alpha cosine beta. Minus 2 sine alpha sine beta. Let's cancel some things. We have a 1 on the left, a 1 on the right, 1 on the left, 1 on the right. Then I'm going to factor out a negative 2 on both sides. So factoring out negative 2 leaves me cosine of alpha minus beta. Factoring out a negative 2 on the right leaves me with cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. And lastly, divide both sides by negative 2. That cancels. And here is our first difference formula. The cosine of alpha minus beta is equal to the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. And there's the formula. Let's go ahead and write down the sum and difference formulas for cosine. So we'll start with the sum formula. So the cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta minus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. And the one we just derived, the cosine of alpha minus beta is equal to the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. So notice that whatever the sign is in the sum or difference, it is the opposite sign in the cosine formula. We'll see that that's not the case in the sine formula shortly. Let's go ahead and do some examples with these formulas. Example number one, find the exact value of cosine of 15 degrees. So 15 degrees, it's not one of the standard angles on the unit circle. So we're going to have to use those standard angles to help us figure out what the cosine of 15 is. So the cosine of 15 degrees, what we need to do is think of two angles that we could add or subtract and end up with a 15. But the two angles we choose have to be angles on the unit circle. There are several choices. I'm going to use 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. Now when I do this, I'm assigning alpha to be 45 degrees and beta to be 30 degrees. 
using the formula above, this gives me the cosine of alpha, which is 45 degrees, times the cosine of beta, 30 degrees, plus the sine of alpha, 45 degrees, times the sine of beta, 30 degrees. So we're just choosing an alpha and a beta and making a substitution. And then from here, we just work it straight out. The cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. The sine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. The sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. And the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Root 2 times root 3 is root 6. When you multiply radicals, numbers on the outside multiply together, numbers on the inside multiply together, but they don't cross uh, multiply together, right? You leave them separate. So we get square root of 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus root 2 times 1 is root 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And then normally what we do is write them together as a single fraction. So we get root 6 plus root 2 over 4. And yeah, it's okay to have a couple of square roots in the top there. No problem. So the answer is root 6 plus root 2 divided by 4. Let's look at example 2. Find the exact value of the cosine of 7 pi over 12. So let's start by trying to figure out what numbers to use here. My suggestion is, as usual, ignore the pi and just see what we can do with 7 over 12. How could you break this up into something over 12 plus another something over 12? Well, how about 4 and 3? Now you could have chosen 5 and 2, but the problem with 5 and 2 is that you then have to use the cosine and the sine of 5 twelfths. And 5 twelfths is not on the unit circle. So we don't want to use that one. But what about 4 twelfths and 3 twelfths? Well, those are on the unit circle. They are in the form of 1 third and 1 fourth. But now let's bring the pi back in. So this is 7 pi over 12, which is 4 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12, which is pi over 3 and pi over 4. So the angles I want to use for alpha and beta are going to be pi over 3 and pi over 4. Let's write it out. So the cosine of 7 pi over 12 is the same as the cosine of pi over 3 plus pi over 4. We're using alpha for pi over 3 beta for pi over 4. Using the formula above on your notes, this is going to be the cosine of pi over 3 times the cosine of pi over 4 minus the sine of pi over 3 times the sine of pi over 4. The cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. The cosine of pi over 2 is root 2 over 2, minus. The sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And the sine of pi over 2 is root 2 over 2. This becomes root 2 minus root 6 over 4. Let's look at page 3. Simplify the expression cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. Let's write out the problem. Cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. In our difference formula, let's use alpha is equal to pi over 2 and beta is equal to theta. And then that expands as the cosine of pi over 2 times the cosine of theta plus the sine of pi over 2 times the sine of theta. The 
The cosine of pi over 2 is 0 times cosine of theta plus the sine of pi over 2 is 1 times sine of theta and the 0 cancels out this first part 1 times sine is just sine. So in fact what we've done is we've created another little identity. The cosine of pi over 2 minus, alpha, uh, minus theta is equal to the sine of theta. And that's pretty good. And we'll use that more in chapter 8, but it's kind of neat. Let's go ahead and look at the sum and difference formulas for sine. So the sine of alpha plus beta is equal to the sine of alpha cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha sine of beta and the sine of alpha minus beta is equal to the sine of alpha cosine of beta minus cosine of alpha sine of beta. Example 4, find the exact value of sine of pi over 12. So again, ignore the pi. Come up with two angles on the unit circle that we can make into pi over 12. So what is 1 twelfth? Well, 1 twelfth is 4 twelfths minus 3 twelfths. And then 4 twelfths would be 1 third. 3 twelfths would be 1 fourth. Bring the pi's back in. So pi over 12 is equal to pi over 3 minus pi over 4. So the sine of pi over 12 is equal to the sine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4. So that is going to be equal to the sine of pi over 3 times the cosine of pi over 4 plus the cosine of pi over 3 times the sine of pi over 4. The sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. The cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. The cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. And the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And if you work this out, you end up with root 6 plus root 2 divided by 4. So one relationship to note on the sine formulas is that whatever sign you have here, if you're taking the sum or the difference, you are using the same sign here in the uh, expansion through the formula. So the thing that I remember is sign. In other words, you're doing sign. You use the same sign. In this case, one sign is the trine sign function. The other sign is the plus or minus. So sign, same sign. Example 5. Find the exact value of cosine of 28 degrees times cosine of 2 degrees minus sine of 28 degrees times the sine of 2 degrees. Well, if I look at this, I can see I have an alpha and a beta, an alpha and a beta, and I have cosine, cosine, sine, sine. That tells me it is the cosine function, if you look at your formulas. Cosine function is the one that uses the cosine, cosine together, and then sine, sine together. Further, the question is, what do we do with these numbers? I have 28 degrees, I have 2 degrees. In the cosine function, we use the opposite sign there. So since these are being subtracted in the cosine function, we should be adding them. So the cosine of 28 degrees plus 2 degrees is the cosine of 30 degrees, which is root 3 over 2.
Example 6. Let sine of alpha be equal to 3 over 4, with alpha between pi over 2 and pi, and the cosine of beta equal to 1 fifth, with beta between 0 and pi over 2. Find each of the following. So the trick to doing this is to draw each of the circles. The first circle I want to draw is the alpha circle. The alpha circle needs an angle where alpha is in the second quadrant, so I'm just going to draw it like this. And then we know that the sine of alpha is 3 over 4. So I'm going to drop the perpendicular. Sine is y over r, so the y needs to be 3. The r needs to be 4. And then I need to figure out what the x is. I'll use the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus 3 squared is equal to 4 squared. Well, this is not the 3, 4, 5 triangle, because the 3, 4, 5 triangle requires that the 5 be the radius, or the hypotenuse. In this case, the 4 is the hypotenuse. So let's work this out. This would be x squared plus 9 equals 16. x squared is equal to 7, by moving the 9 over. And then we take the square root, and we're going to get x is equal to the square root of 7. But I have to remember, when I take the square root, I could get positive or negative. Now I know it can't be both because this angle is in a certain quadrant. And the question is, which quadrant is it in, and what sign is the x when the angle is in that quadrant? So the angle here is in the second quadrant, angle alpha, and the x in quadrant 2 is negative. So let's go ahead and make that a negative, and we'll make this x negative root 7. Let's go ahead and make the beta circle while we're here. The beta circle is in quadrant 1. Uh, the angle beta is in quadrant 1. Drop the perpendicular. The cosine of beta is 1 fifth. So that means the x is 1. The radius is 5. And I need to figure out what the y is. Again, use the Pythagorean theorem. 1 squared plus y squared is equal to 5 squared. That works out to 1 plus y squared is equal to 25. So y squared is equal to 24. And then take the square root of both sides. Simplifying the square root, you get y is equal to 2 root 6. So let's go ahead and replace y with 2 root 6. And now I have everything I need with my circles to complete the rest of these problems. Uh, problem 6, part a, what is the cosine of alpha? Well, from the alpha circle, the x is negative root 7, and the radius is 4. So it's negative root 7 over 4. The sine of beta is going to come from the beta circle. That's going to be y over r. And the y is 2 root 6, and the r is 5. So it's 2 root 6 over 5. Part C, the cosine of alpha plus beta. Well, I don't know what alpha and beta are, but I can use the sum formula for cosine. And that would be cosine of alpha cosine of beta minus sine alpha sine beta and then I can work these out I'll go ahead and set up my parentheses here the cosine of alpha we just did that that's root negative root 7 over 4 the cosine of beta was given that's 1 fifth you can also look at the circle the sine of alpha was given is 3 fourths, and the sine of beta from the beta circle is 2 root 6 over 5. If we work that out, multiply the two left fractions here, we get negative root 7 over 20 multiply the two fractions on the right, and we get negative 6 root 6 over 20. 
Remember that the 3 and the 2 multiply, but the 6 on the inside uh, stays the same. We have a common denominator, so we can just add these together. So it's negative root 7 minus 6 root 6 over 20. Or you can factor out the negative and pull it in front of the fraction. That gives us root 7 plus 6 root 6 over 20. Either one, both are perfectly acceptable. Finally, using the same numbers, let's do the sine of alpha plus beta. The expansion of sine of alpha plus beta is the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. I'll set up my parentheses again. The sine of alpha is 3 fourths. The cosine of beta is 1 fifth. The cosine of alpha is negative root 7 over 4, and the sine of beta is 2 root 6 over 5. Multiply these fractions together, we get 3 over 20 minus, because of the negative, 2 is the only number on the outside. 7 and 6 are on the inside, so that gives us root 42 over 20. Check to see if root 42 will simplify. It does not, so we'll just leave it. And then combine the fraction. We get 3 minus 2 root 42 over 20. Let's take a look at example 7. Establish the identity. Cosine of alpha plus beta over cosine alpha cosine beta is equal to 1 minus tangent alpha times tangent beta. So let's start with the left hand side. Cosine of alpha plus beta divided by cosine alpha times cosine beta. And the first thing I want to do is expand the numerator, the cosine of alpha plus beta. I'll use the sum formula for cosine. That gives us cosine alpha times cosine beta minus sine alpha times sine beta. The denominator is the same. Cosine of alpha, cosine beta. Next, I'm going to split the fraction up. We have subtraction in the fraction, so I'm going to split up the first part over the denominator, and I'm split up the second part over the same denominator. It's sort of like subtracting fractions or adding fractions, but in reverse. That gives us cosine alpha cosine beta over cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta over cosine alpha cosine beta. And uh, that's pretty much it. The left part here is 1 minus, grouping these two together, the sine of alpha over the cosine beta gives me tangent alpha. And grouping the next two together gives me tangent beta. And that's what we were looking for. Example 8. Find the exact value of the sine of the arc cosine of root 2 over 2 plus the arc sine of 5 over 13. Well, let's set this up with an alpha and a beta. And let's draw the alpha and beta circles. So the alpha circle is going to be the circle with an angle alpha 
That alpha has to be in the first quadrant because we're taking the arc cosine of a positive number. And we're taking the arc cosine of root 2 over 2. That means the point on the unit circle would be root 2 over 2. We know that the other point is also, or the other coordinate rather, is root 2 over 2. And we actually know what this angle is. It's actually pi over 4. So we can actually, from now on, just use alpha is equal to pi over 4 if we'd like. We might want to know the rest of the point in, in case you don't have the unit circle handy. For the beta circle, let's go ahead and draw that. Again, we're taking the arc sine of a positive, so that'll be a quadrant one angle. I'll just draw it like this. Call this beta. It's the arc sine of 5 over 13, so that means the y is 5 and the radius is 13. Uh, use the Pythagorean theorem to deduce that the x coordinate has to be 12. So now we have this is equal to the sine of alpha cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta using the sum formula for sine. And then use those two circles to fill in what each of those trig functions are. The sine of alpha is going to be root 2 over 2. The cosine of beta is the x-coordinate over the radius, so that's 12 over 13 in the beta circle. The cosine of alpha is root 2 over 2. And the sine of beta is 5 over 13. Multiplying the tops, we get 12 root 2 over 26 plus 5 root 2 over 26. We can combine the fractions because they have the same denominator. The numerators are, are both in terms of root 2, so we can add those together as well. 12 plus 5 is 17, so that's 17 root 2 over 26. Let's look at the sum and difference formulas for tangent. So the tangent of alpha plus beta is equal to the tangent of alpha plus the tangent of beta divided by 1 minus the tangent of alpha times the tangent of beta. And the difference formula is very much alike, except in the numerator, where we have a plus on the original one, we change that to a minus. So we get tangent of alpha minus tangent beta. And in the denominator, where we had a minus, we now have a plus. And that gives us 1 plus tangent alpha times tangent beta. Example 9. Find the exact value of tangent of 195. So first, let's figure out what two angles would add up to be 195. You might want to use 180 and 15, but you don't have any information about a 15 degree angle, so we can't do that. Let's use 135 plus 60. Again, these are not unique. You can use any two angles that you have information about as long as they add up to the number you want. So the tangent of 195 degrees is equal to the tangent of 135 degrees plus 60 degrees. So the alpha is 135, the beta is 60, and this is the tangent of 135 degrees plus the tangent of 60 degrees divided by 1 minus the tangent of 135 degrees times the tangent of 60 degrees. The tangent of 135 degrees is negative 1. 
the tangent of 60 degrees is root 3. And uh, we divide by 1 minus those two numbers multiplied together. And that gives us root 3 minus 1, just rearranging the top a little bit, divided by root 3 plus 1. Rearranging the bottom a little bit. And even though the bottom is not rationalized, that's usually the format that you'll see these answers in. If you did need to rationalize it, you could. And you could multiply both the top and the bottom by root 3 minus 1. Example 10, simplify tangent of pi over 4 plus the arc sine of 3 fifths. So again, we have an alpha and a beta. The alpha is given to us as pi over 4. The beta, let's draw the beta circle. We have the sine of the angle beta is equal to 3 fifths. So that means the y coordinate is 3. The hypotenuse or the radius is 5, and by the Pythagorean theorem, the x coordinate is 4. So this is going to equal the tangent of pi over 4 plus the tangent of beta over 1 minus the tangent of pi over 4 times the tangent of beta the tangent of pi over 4 is 1 plus the tangent of beta going to the beta circle tangent is y over x so the tangent is going to be 3 over 4 and then we use these numbers again in the bottom simplify we get 1 plus 3 fourths divided by 1 minus 3 fourths. To simplify, I want to multiply by the little denominators, the denominators of the little fractions. I'll multiply by 1 in the form of 4 over 4 so that when these distribute, the little denominators will cancel. That gives us 4 plus 3 over 4 minus 3, which is 7.